After his defeat at the Battle of Saratoga in the fall of 1777, British General John Burgoyne found himself surrounded on all sides by colonial forces. With just five days of rations remaining for the nearly 5,000 men, women, and children under their command, Burgoyne and his officers decided to seek a meeting to escape the siege. Burgoyne drew up his terms in advance, but at their meeting on the morning of October 14th, American General Horatio Gates spoke first, demanding a near unconditional surrender. Burgoyne's response? They would rather die than accept those terms. The next morning, Gates sent a message to the British camp, surprisingly agreeing to nearly all of Burgoyne's original terms. So, on October 17th, Burgoyne marched his army out of the trenches near Fort Hardy Park and on to Boston, where they were to be discharged and never serve again in the present conflict. But who really came out on top in these negotiations? The British did not surrender as prisoners of war, but under an agreement called a convention, which Burgoyne wanted so he would be free from the shame of surrender. But because they were not prisoners of war, the Crown, not the rebels, had to pay for lodging and provisions for the defeated soldiers. That was a great deal for the financially strapped Continental Congress back in Philadelphia. Because King George didn't want to recognize the authority of the American government, he refused to ratify the convention. Instead of being discharged, Burgoyne's so-called convention army was marched to Virginia and remained in America until the end of the war in 1783. So old King George paid six years of expenses for an army that sat on the sidelines. Thank you.